This is the new Honda Civic, now lower, wider, longer and designed to be a little more premium than before. This is all done to convince you not to buy a Volkswagen Golf, but a Honda Civic instead. And you can tell Honda is trying to make the Civic feel more upmarket in here because gone is the old car's haphazard arrangement and it's been replaced with something that's far more ordered. Take the Dials for instance. Now in the old car, they're on sort of like a split level dashboard, but now they're right in front of the driver like you find in any other normal hatchback. And they're quite smart too. Every single car has a TFT display and it looks really quite good. And while the plastics aren't as squidgy as you'll find on the Volkswagen Golf, everything does feel very well screwed together and it feels a lot plusher than it does on the old Civic. And the infotainment screen is new too. It's a lot better than the old Civic, but it still has a few problems. That's something I'll talk about a little bit later on. The Civic is well catered for for storage. While the door bins don't pass the car by a big bottle test, the central cubby has a couple of cup holders which can be arranged to fit a 1.5 litre bottle of water and the glove box is of a decent size too. Elsewhere there's a useful space ahead of the gear lever and behind the dash there's an area to charge your phone. Meanwhile, you can choose seven versions of the Civic, which is around two too many. This EX car we have here is a little too pricey, but it gets adaptive dampers, leather, rear cross traffic alert, and you can optionally get wireless phone charging. But it's the safety kit that's impressive, as all cars get a vast array of standard kit, including traffic sign recognition, lane keep assist, and adaptive cruise control that will take control of your car stopping and moving off. With the Civic now having larger dimensions, it means there's more space inside, but back here you discover the Civic isn't particularly well thought out. Whilst I can't complain about knee room, I mean there's plenty of it, that seat is set up in my driving position and I've got loads of room for my knees, if I sit upright, my head actually hits the top of this bar and it's just... Well, I mean, if you're over six foot, you're really going to struggle back here. Now, you can fit three people at a push. If, they, if somebody sits in the middle here, they will have enough headroom. They won't have much shoulder room, but for shorter journeys, it's fine. There is an armrest here, which is quite good with a couple of cup holders. And there are ice fix points in both outer seats. But this new Civic doesn't have something called magic seats. Now, the old Civic had it. It was quite a clever system. It meant that the seat bases could fold upwards, allowing you to load large items like bikes and other large things like that. But this doesn't have it. They're completely fixed, which I mean is a bit of a shame, really. The Civic has an enormous boot. It's only beaten by the Skoda Octavia for outright volume. And once you've lifted the tailgate, you see the opening is square and very wide. Honda has also developed a new type of parcel shelf. Yes, those clever Japanese. Now, instead of lumbering with this great big piece of cardboard, it's just a roller blind. So you just lift this up here and you roll it over. And it's very easy to remove as well. Just one clip and out it pops. Quite what you do with this, I'm not entirely sure, but it's, uh, it, does, it is quite an interesting thing. Quite novel, you have to admit. Now, if you go for the EX model and above, you get some extra storage with this movable boot floor. But that's really where the good points stop because when you fold down the rear seats, and it's perfectly straightforward to do with a couple of clips on top of the seats, you'll see that there's an enormous hump in the floor, which does mean loading suitcases to the very front of the boot is a little bit difficult. But I'm just nitpicking really, because overall, boot space in this car is absolutely vast. There's a small range of engines in the Civic. There's a 1-litre turbo petrol with 127 bhp and a new 180 bhp 1.5-litre turbo petrol. Arriving later will be a 1.6 diesel and a 2-litre turbo petrol with 316 bhp, but that's reserved for the hot Type R version. 
And this is the one litre turbo petrol, and it's a really good fit in the Civic, and it's really energetic. It feels and sounds very similar to Ford's three-cylinder EcoBoost, but it doesn't feel as lively as the Ford engine. That's largely because the rev limiter, it's five and a half thousand RPM, and that's a bit of a shame. You can't really rev this engine out. It's also not as smooth as VW's one litre TSI because you do get quite a lot of vibrations coming through the pedals. But really, I'm being pernickety because it's a very good and strong engine for the Civic. It's also nicely matched to this six-speed manual gearbox, and it is so precise. It's one of the nicest gearboxes currently in production. Now, you can choose the Civic with a CVT gearbox, but in all honesty, it behaves much like a normal CVT, and that's not very well. Along with the brilliant manual gearbox, the Civic is actually a fun car to drive. Honda has fitted it with torque vectoring, which keeps the car fixed on its cornering line. And there's a new multi-link independent rear suspension, so it rides and goes round corners better. And while the steering is a little lifeless, it's quick and accurate enough. The Civic also rides quite well and is hushed and comfortable when cruising. Bad points? Well, let's start off with visibility. Now, in the old Civic, it was particularly dreadful, but in this one, it's a little bit better, but still not great. You still have a bar that goes over the back of the windscreen. And with the windscreen wiper mounted on it, it means that when you actually look in your rear view mirror, that's all you look at. And front visibility is fine until you look down here. And with the large A pillar and the absolutely enormous door mirror, it does create a bit of a blind spot right there and over there, which is particularly bad when you're trying to negotiate out of a junction. And lastly, it's this infotainment system. Now, like I've said before, it's a lot better than it was in the old Civic, but it's still not that good. There are too many submenus, and there are far too many small buttons to actually negotiate. It's in stark contrast to the simplicity of the systems you get in the Volkswagen Golf and the Vauxhall Astra. It's just unnecessarily complicated at times. And lastly, it's the styling. While looks are always subjective, the Civic is a difficult car to warm to, what with its angles and fussy lines and bits of plastic that serve no use whatsoever. But there's no doubting the Civic is a big step on from the old car. While it may not have the inoffensive looks of a Golf or a Vauxhall Astra, it's well made, different and good to drive. If you've enjoyed this video, watch our review of the Mark 7.5 VW Golf and our Family Hatchbacks playlist. And please like and share this video and press the Carbuy logo to subscribe to our channel.